<laughs> the human torch. <laughs> Hey everybody, the World Around the Barrel Vintage Baseball Podcast, talking vintage baseball players, coast to coast, border to border. It's uh, it's really cool what's going on tonight. We have the Rum River Rovers from Minnesota, don't you know? <laughs> uh, they're on the show, and we also have an equally big deal, Rudy Frias who if you thought Rudy Frias was quitting the show and just thought of an excuse of, I am an actor. Well, his acting gig is over. We're going to talk to him about it for a couple of minutes uh, before we get into baseball. Uh, but he's back. Haters, he's back. That's right. Rudy, good to see you, my friend. It's good to see you. I can't believe, I mean... I forgot how this all worked. There's dust all over everything. I I know that you're having a hard time remembering how everything works because you were on time tonight. So, uh, <laughs> Touché. so absolutely, I know what's going on. And now I'm going to give you 30 seconds to explain your acting gig and the source material and your character and how it went. 30 seconds, go now. Um, it was a it's a surrealist play that will be premiering at the Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago. Um, it's called You Will Get Sick. Yeah, it's a real pick me up. Um, but it's it was the most beautiful and amazing experience I've ever had doing a show. Uh, it explores how uh, we uh, approach and handle illness at especially terminal illness today uh in life well we got as much as we could actually. there you go <laughs> that was a quick 30 hey, well you spent the first six saying nothing no go ahead and finish i'm just no and no that's it i mean there's not much else to say if you want to find out more or more about second it extension no 30 second extension go now Go on my Facebook page or check out Available Light Theater. They're amazing. They do great work. And uh, you will uh, see some reviews of the show. It it went pretty well. I'm not going to complain. I've seen some reviews uh, because I really wanted to make fun of you. But I have been forced to say, apparently, you did a phenomenal job. Uh, and the rest of the cast also uh, I did not see one single negative review, and trust me, I looked. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not see one negative review. So yeah, I thought for sure you would get into this, you would act, you'd get the bug back, and you'd be on to the next acting thing, and you told me that's not going to happen. So here's the question. Is it happening, or are you done? I'm done. I'm done. It was a... It was a special moment, special one-time exemption. I'm done. Uh, my wife wanted me to tell you that she oh, hopes no. she hopes you're happy because uh, she still has not she doesn't have a hobby. And I've gone from rehearsals back into podcasting. So she she said, "I hope Barrel Roller's happy." But you only podcast with me once a week. <laughs> Very true. For an hour, so right. I am happy. You tell well, her you goddamn right I'm happy. I know. Well, I talk about you all the time. That's the problem. <laughs> I know she loves that. Okay. Well, <laughs> on that note, let's bring in the, I'm going to, I said the name of the team right once. I'll never, Red River Rovers. Nope. Is that right? Rum. Nope. There it nope. is. Nope. Rum River Rovers. Uh, from the Minnesota, we got Mark Morris, uh, Morrison, and we got William Colicott. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Great. Looking looking forward to this. I uh, I listened to one episode of yours, and I was scrolling through the names, and I saw Marbles, so I know him. So I figured you guys are Michigan-based. Half of it is. And uh, and we have Mark Nessie Morrison. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Thanks for the invite. And uh, as always, baseball on the mind. There it is. <laughs> Uh, especially this time of year. Our, our Rudy, you and I are going to go back and forth on these questions. One for one. Here we go. 
I'm leading off the interview with something that we were talking just before we hit record. William Colicott. Big Willie was on the Royal Oak Wahoos. He's from Michigan, and he attended the Frankenmuth Festival uh, of uh, vintage baseball that I put on, and he entered the Gingerly Gentleman Contest, which many of you understand what that is. And he made it all the way to the finals against Joe Ace Twilliger, and he lost fair and square. Uh, and then he decided that he had had too much of the heat and that he would throw up and sit down for a while. And so yeah. he did that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and for a long while, actually, everyone was gone. <laughs> and William was still there. Uh, and that William was telling us about that experience and we were ruining it. So I'm going to ask him to tell the same story. No. How did that gingerly gentleman go for you, William? I, I was surprised that I made it as far as I did. Um, the, the, it, the, it actually ended up really good because that was the first time I met the Rovers. Now they weren't at the Frankenmuth tournament as the Rovers. They were there as the fungi, but several of our players were there and they had all finished their games and came over to watch the mightiest striker competition. And then the, 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 the gingerly gentleman competition. And that was actually my, that, that was their first impression of me because the, the Wahoos had gone home, but the Rovers from Minnesota had stayed to watch the competition. So they saw me and they saw like, Oh, we need some of this. You know, we, we need, you know, I, I did, I didn't win, but, mm -hmm. and, and ACE is already geographically restricted to, uh, to Canton, but I had I had talked to them before the tournament and said, "Hey, I'm I'm moving to Minnesota in a year or a little bit less, and I'm looking for a team." And that's how I got in touch with them. So them seeing my reversal of fortune was the best, or one of the best things that happened to me that year, actually. Um, I just want to interject and say that when you said they saw what I had to offer, a paraphrasing, I just had an <laughs> image of you vomiting on like suffering from heat stroke and them seeing that and being like, yes, we want that. But Rudy, he didn't say <laughs> they saw what he had to offer. They said, and I quote, and I wrote it down. We need some of this. We need some. Of this. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think I had the reversal of fortune after people had left the area. Cause I remember finishing and just sitting down to relax a bit. And then I'm like, Hold on a sec. I'm not feeling feeling very good. We yeah. need some of this. <laughs> uh, so no, uh, most people were still there. Okay. Uh, and we had, I believe, Miss Heidi, the scorekeeper for Saginaw Bay City, was very interested in your health. Yep. <laughs> uh, she she refused to leave until she knew you were going to be okay, and uh, and that took a while. Yeah. Not gonna lie, uh, you said that you drove back to Royal Oak and then drove back to Frankenmuth. I thought you were just gonna sleep right on the field the way things are going. Uh, yeah. How how was the next day of games for you? It it sucked really bad. <laughs> I think because it was another like hour and a half or something drive back to Royal Oak and then having to come back in the morning because of course you know my luck had it so or the the, the Wahoo's luck had it so that it was like a 10 a.m. game. So I'm leaving Royal Oak at like eight o'clock because I don't want to get there right at game time. I want to get there with some time to sit and breathe before I have to play because I'm usually batting lead off and they're usually mm. counting on me to run. So yeah, I, I, I did debate, should I just bite the bullet and get a hotel room? But then I'm thinking to myself, I have no other clothes. <laughs> I have nothing. I, you know, I can go to the local pharmacy and get toothbrush and toothpaste or something like that and you know but i i just decided i'm already into it enough i'll just drive home and drive back oh this is uh this is a tale that i feel like many people in the community can relate to <laughs> the the dreaded do i make the trip back or do i just sleep in this stinky ass uniform so oh man um messy i want to i want to jump in here and try and just get a i like to know familiarize myself with as many clubs as possible 
Sure. And the Rum River Rovers have escaped my uh, my uh, supervision, if you will. Mm -hmm. Talk about this club. When did this club come into existence? How did we get this name? Because it just rolls off the tongue. And I and then the follow up question to this would be the worst that anybody has ever butchered your name in trying to say it as the mm -hmm. Rum River Rovers. Right. Well, um, it really started with my best friend. I grew up with playing baseball. Um, he took over the Osceola Onions of Wisconsin, and the guy who was running the Osceola onions was like, you need to run the team. You know, more people. Um, I don't want to do this anymore. He lived on a farm. He was like, I want to concentrate on my farm. And our other best friend um, that we grew up with was a farm hand with him. That's how this all kind of connected um, for the team. And so my buddy, Eric two bit is his nickname. He decided, okay, I'm going to roll with this. I'm going to take the team. Um, and we, we decided, you know, what's, what's a landmark this, this team didn't exist, you know, for hit baseball history that we don't track any teams in Anoka County, Minnesota until I would say early 1900s, maybe late 1800s. Um, but we decided, okay, if we're going to do this, let's, let's come up with a creative name. What would, what would be something that would, um, I don't know, kind of go with the community, kind of involve it, kind of uh, tie everything together. And we have a river in Anoka County called the Rum River. So then we were like, all right, we got we got the Rum River. We used to canoe on the Rum River all the time as kids. We'd have a good time. Even as adults, we'd have a good time with, you know, a few barley pops in the canoe. And, uh, you know, there was instances of tipping the canoe into the Rum River mm -hmm. and... So it was kind of a, a a hallmark of our of our childhood and um, just growing up together. So to name it after something we all were familiar with, and then the Rovers part just came from baseball and just acknowledging the the language and everything else. So Rum River Rovers, it it like you said, it rolls off the tongue. Um, and that's kind of the history of it. I may have missed a few details here or there, but uh, um, that that's essentially how we became who we <laughs> who we are. And uh, um, I as love far it. As, as far as who butchered it the worst, um, so you, you can leave names out for you know. No. Yeah, <laughs> we won't. I we did. Won't, I we won't name any. I name. butchered it the worst <laughs> on Saturday. Uh, I had Paul Hunkley of the Mount Clemens regulars come up to me and thanks for listening, Paul. I appreciate you. Uh, he came up and asked what our next episode was about. And I went through about 15 different names of your club and wasn't sure if I even got it right. And he's like, never heard of them. I'm like, let me try a different name. Yeah. And I went through 15 different, <laughs> and he's like, nope, never heard of them. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. And uh, I, I got home and I looked it up. Rum River Rovers, and I had never said that once, but I had said all three words <laughs> throughout the 15 different names. You just didn't right? say that combination. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mark, we... Mark, let me ask you this. Go ahead. Mark, were you, uh... I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you have oh, some that to, okay. I was just, were you I was a... just... oh, I was just going to say, we, start, we started the club back in 2012 was our first official season. Um, well, we started the club in 2012. First official season was 2013. So we're a relatively new club when you compare us to other clubs. So were, were you a member of the fun guy at any time? No, no, never, uh, never been a member of the fun guy. Um, we know those guys real well. Um, they, they're a bunch of fun guys. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Um, no, they, they, uh, I haven't been a member of their, their club. They kind of started down in Rochester. We're up in the twin cities area. We're more North suburban, um, twin cities area. They're kind of South in Rochester. I probably am butchering where their exact location is. Fillmore County. If you're familiar, you're probably not familiar with Minnesota, but that's oh, yeah. where their, 
based out of is Fillmore County. So who doesn't know about Minnesota? I watched Fargo. Hey, <laughs> uh, uh, your your first match, your first match on the schedule is a uh, something. Uh, it's a it's more, more of an event. Uh, listen to these teams that are attending. You got the Afton Red Sox. You got the uh, Menominee Blue Caps. You have the Fillmore Fungi. You have the St. Croix Quick Steps. You got the Mankato Baltics. Mankato. Uh, it's, Mankato. No, don't Not, ever correct me. Okay. Ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How dare you? And this is East Bethel, Minnesota. So mm. this is the Rover Fest. Is this the first year for the Rover Fest? Nope, this is probably our sixth year, give or take. We've done this. Uh, we usually do, um, we just kind of like to do it as a spring training. We call it fest because we don't want to give it any kind of real meaning. <laughs> None of vintage baseball has any real meaning, but it's it's more about stretching the legs, stretching the arms, seeing if anybody remembered how to swing a bat. <laughs> Um, or hit a ball or field. Yeah. Um, so it's more about getting getting back together with our Minnesota uh, friends and and we try to invite who we we open it up. We don't cap our teams, but we don't have a uh, <laughs> what should what should I say? We don't have a Menominee probably has the best reach. Maybe them and the fungi because people have obviously heard of the fungi because they're a bunch of fun guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we just kind of open it up as like a spring training opportunity and just get together, have fun, play some ball, try not to hurt ourselves. <laughs> Love that. That's a that's a that's a tall order this early because like I'm t I'm guessing I'm just mm -hmm. gonna step out on a limb here. I don't know much about Minnesota. Will maybe you can answer this because you come you're you're moving from Michigan to Minnesota. When does a spring officially show up? Not calendar, weather, tolerable. When is spring showing up in Minnesota, Will? The, this year, with a light winter, in terms of at least what I saw with snowfall, I would say mid, you know, late March. Really? I mean, you may get, there may still be snow on the ground or some sprinkles into April. Well, I mean... I don't know. It's like I, I, I work inside all day at my desk remotely, so I don't really see much of the outdoors except for walking around the block at lunchtime. But um, I would say, you know, late March. OK, um, that you'll, you'll start getting like 50s or 60s. Um, and then. I feel like that's early enough, you know, that's not that's enough to start practicing regular baseball outdoors. OK, so, yeah. Nice. Uh, I don't know about you, Rudy, but here in Michigan, Rudy's from Ohio, by the way. Uh, he's Sorry. the captain of the Columbus Capitals, just in case. Uh, oh no! You guys have ever heard of those guys? Very familiar. Um, with <laughs> uh, here in Michigan, I have a story the story. I want to hear it later. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh no! Yeah, let Barrel Roll finish his story, and yeah. I want to hear your story. Go ahead, Barrel Roll. Tell me about Michigan. Uh, well, the season that we're in currently in Michigan is May. And that season is, uh, we were really excited about vintage baseball. At the end of the season, we scheduled 35 matches, and now we're going to cancel every weekend for the entire month of May. And that's what we do here in Michigan. Uh, so our vintage baseball season doesn't start until June. Uh, but we decide to screw with as many as many people's lives as possible during May and, and offend as many wives and annoy as many children as possible. But anyway, uh, tell us your Columbus capital story, Mark. Well, I, I played in the Ohio cup, uh, several years back now, um, with the Minnesota union, uh, Corky Gaskill was the, uh, captain of that, of that club. And, uh, it was, three of us Rovers, the Rovers that Willie met at uh, Frankenmuth, the Barry family. Uh, you got Bubba, you got Pudge, and you got Steve, the father, the patriarch. Mm -hmm. It's it's three quarters of our Rum River Rover team. What's his nickname? <laughs> uh, Playboy. Playboy. <laughs> anyway, we played on the Minnesota Union, and that year, Corky was like, well, I got 
four of the Rum River Rovers, I want to play a tough schedule. And so he asked, I think, to play a tougher schedule, you know, mm. however that's decided by the powers that may be. And so we get there Friday night. We have the, you know, the um, all comers match. Everything was cool. Um, and then they decide after that we were going to go out to dinner. And someone suggested the the cafe where you get the huge hamburger. What's that? Darlings. Yes. Yes. And uh, so we went to Thurman's and everybody on our team was like, Mark, you look like you could eat a house. We're going to challenge you to the Thurminator mm -hmm. contest. And I was like, okay, I don't, whatever. I like hamburgers. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I can eat. Uh, yeah. So we waited. It was probably, it was a full house Friday night. We didn't get a table till about 10 30 ish, oh. maybe 10 15. And of course, everybody at, at the table, we had like nine of us, and everybody is like, Yeah, Terminator, Terminator. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at it on the menu and I'm going, Man, that's more food than I've eaten in years. So I'm like, Whatever, I'm, I'm here, I'm having fun. Let's do it. Let's experience the Thurman Cafe for its glory <laughs> i ordered a therminator and uh everybody timed themselves and see how fast they could eat it yeah. i didn't partake in that part but i was kind of in the background going oh, i'm gonna try and keep up with some of these guys and see if they can see if i can keep pace and i did i did all right i held my own anyway eat the therminator have a few beers tell a few stories next thing we know it's it's midnight one o'clock <laughs> Like, oh, we got to play at eight in the morning. Who do we play? Oh, the Capitals. Corky's like, be ready for these guys. They're really, really good. They have a lot of big hitters, and they are just a really good Ohio club. And so we're all like, oh, okay. <laughs> so we are we go to sleep. We get up. I'm, I'm still full the next morning. I can't even eat any breakfast. And I'm like, I, I looked at my girlfriend, my wife now, Jill, at the time when we woke up, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to play. I hope I sit the first two innings just, just to digest. I said, I, this is this is insane. I've never felt this full in my entire life. And so we get to the game and we're warming up and I'm just dawdling around, hoping I don't have to play the first two innings. Nope. You're, you're, you're here in the field, Mark. You're you're playing second base. You know, you're doing this. You're doing that. Anyway, the this is a really long story. I apologize. But, oh, it's um, great. No, no, go. So the game is actually close and competitive. And I don't know if you were pitching or who was pitching at the time, but we got bases loaded. And I got up to the plate with a Terminator in my stick, still digesting. <laughs> and I think I hit a hard line drive down the left field line. And of course it's in the morning. So there's dew on the grass and it had a lot of top spin on it. It hit the grass top spin spun away from your left fielder. And I'm thinking I'm jogging to first, like this, <laughs> there's no way. And everybody's screaming, Nessie run, Nessie run. And I get to second and I look and I see your left fielder turning his back. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I got to keep going. I can't stop. I got to keep <laughs> running. And, and Big Willie can contest. I don't run like a deer. I run like a fat bulldog, basically. Um, <laughs> shout out to the UMD Bulldogs. That's where I went to school. Um, anyway, I, I hit second. I'm rounding. I go to third, and I see our third base coach going, go, go. I'm like, there's no way. I'm going to. I'm going to probably pass out or puke on the way to home. And I finally get to the home plate and cross the line. And man, it was everything I could do to keep my food down <laughs> and um, keep everything intact. And that's, and then of course we had a, we had a two run lead on you guys. And then we managed to blow that and uh, ended up losing <laughs> the game to the Capitals. I think it was a close, it was like an eight to six or nine yeah. to six or something like that. But um absolute blast i mean it was just 
hilarious to think about we what we did the previous night and then come out and play baseball in the morning on a full tank it was just uh that was my first that was my initiation to the uh the columbus you know wow i'm so glad we were hospitable to you yes uh uh everyone loves the tale of a reluctant grand slam and uh you know so that's no i actually remember and in my head which what i'm doing is so i record all the vid uh, all the games okay and so now i'm gonna have to go through all my ohio cup union matches and see if i can find this and then uh if i can find it check the facebook page it's gonna be up there so you can see uh messy with a uh 10 pound burger went resting right about there running the bases at the ohio cup that'll be a lot of fun yeah yeah hey hey, will i had a question another question for you because i'm always interested in individuals who play start vintage baseball in one area and move to another and i mean you could do state you could do geographic you know you could go east coast west coast whatever um what was that transition like for you i mean you you won you took the biggest step, the you you got over the biggest hurdle right away. You identified a club in a place that you'd be moving to, and you made contact. So that's like boom, hurdle number one taken care of. But when you get out on the field, any any differences, pace of game, like what was that like for you? Uh, I well, I noticed like the the games that we play in Minnesota. There's a lot more of them on regular softball fields. And mm-hmm. baseball fields, which in Michigan it was all, you know, just flat meadows of grass or baseball fields, but we wouldn't play on the dirt diamond. We'd play in the outfield where the local Pee Wee football team plays, and there's a disc golf course next door or in the woods off to the side. That was our thing in Royal Oak, and we, we had that. That was our home field, and we had away fields. Um, but in Minnesota, maybe this is just the Rovers, but we travel for a lot of our stuff. I think our, our, our Rover Fest is our home event and that's our home field, but we play there for only the first weekend of the year. At least that's what it was when I arrived halfway through the season last year. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed the, the Michigan season would go into October. The Minnesota season, we get one weekend in October and it's, and it's cold (laughs) and then we're done. (laughs) And Minnesota, we we drive a lot more. Yep. There's trips. There's, I I I can't. I didn't go to Mankato last year, and I can't go this year because I'll actually be back in Michigan for a, a Wahoos game at the Lansing Lugnut Stadium. That'll be fun. But uh, more, yeah, definitely Minnesota. More driving, whereas Royal Oak was the furthest we drove was to uh either. Actually, it was probably to Walker Tavern by the NASCAR track, if I remember Brooklyn. correctly. Yeah, cause, I mean, well, actually, no, we 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 went to Lansing, but that would, Lansing was maybe an hour. Flint was a little bit less than an hour. Franken Booth was was a little bit more, but Walker Tavern was hour and a half, okay. hour forty five. So okay, yeah, I I liked. I, although I do like the trips, I love I love the trips. I love going to the UP because I went to college in the UP, and that was a good 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 trip back to uh that area as as an ann arbor native going to columbus though you're you feel like you're walking into a landfill you know Sorry. you know it's like especially on the first football weekend where it's osu versus notre dame and you're trying to find a place to eat in downtown columbus and it's like there's nowhere you know yeah you know everyone's everything's already booked out yeah they they're, they're, they like that stuff here so that's uh, uh yeah i i don't really look i the the Buckeyes exist. That's in my world. That I don't really. I'm not gonna die on that hill. I don't yeah, really care. That's okay. I I was I was I was gonna say I was into it when I was a kid. But, yeah. You know, rooting for Michigan, but I went to. I didn't even go there for school, so <laughs> I, I I don't care. I went to Ohio University. I'm a Bobcat because I had that's to get away from yeah. the Buckeyes, so it's not a big deal. But you know, on these road trips, are you rolling solo or are you rolling with the team or uh, someone from the team? uh for if it, i i i mean i would us- usually drive myself mm-hmm. when we had the up trip up to marquette last in last july um my girlfriend came with me and we it it it, it, it we didn't just spend a couple days there for the baseball 
we spent like several days on either end of that. And that was like a, a vacation and it was great. We went to, uh, went to Marquette, Escanaba, Sault Ste. Marie. Only place we didn't go was Houghton. Cause that's where I went to school. And I'm thinking I've already been there too many times. So, Fair. uh, yeah. I could see Messi nodding in approval and barrel roller understands this. When you can couple a vintage baseball trip with something to entertain your significant other, like, that's the sweet spot, right? So, <laughs> absolutely. We, I made the trip w- with Big Willie. It was the Menominee Blue Caps that got a team and then traveled to Marquette to play the Bay City fellas. And because we had uh, one of the guys on the Afton Red Sox, um, Buttons, who played for Bay City, was also a transplant from Michigan. So, there's a lot of Michigan. Minnesota connections here. And I, I think it's great. I uh, obviously as a native Minnesotan, I wish we'd play more out outside of Minnesota clubs, um, obviously logistics and otherwise make that somewhat more difficult, but whenever you get an opportunity, my wife and I did the same thing. We tagged on days behind the trip to go. We went to Mackinac, um, stayed, stayed over there, stayed at uh, St. Ig- St. I can't, St. Ignis, is that how you pronounce Saint it? St. Ignis. Ignis? Okay. Ignis. Ignis, sorry. I don't know. Barrel Roller, can we get a confirmation on that pronunciation? St. Ignis? Okay. And then I, I saw Nessie at one of the tourist yeah. attractions in the UP. <laughs> I hear, hey, Willie. And then, you know, I look over and my, my girlfriend is with me and we're like, oh, it's Nessie. You know, yeah. and that was like a couple, that was like hours something away from Marquette. Cause that yeah, we were at the, at the blue water, whatever that was, that yeah. little park, that little state park. I love it. Kitch, kitch it a kippy. Kit, yeah. Yeah. So say Bless it again. You. What? Kitch it a kippy. That I think it's a, I think it's like a native American, native American name or native American word. Huh? Get your gummy. Get your gummy. It was the native Americans name for lake superior i think i feel like y'all are making all these words up no. i can't just... okay <laughs> honest <laughs> to god lake superior get your gooby yeah it, the up has a bunch of native american um you know you know names for cities and then it's also a bunch of french stuff marquette is french okay i think mackinac is french maybe it is. i think I'm, you'll I'm, hear yeah. get your gooby in the very famous Gordon yep. Lightfoot song, uh, "Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald." Correct. We are we are skewing. <laughs> <laughs> we are really nailing a certain demographic here. <laughs> I'm part of that demographic. I have no choice. Uh, you guys were talking about playing baseball in October. You know what that ba- that season is in Michigan when uh, it's a bunch of teams that are excited about baseball schedule a bunch of games in October and then they just cancel them because nobody can play because actually our season here in Michigan is June until the middle of August. Okay. Ah. <laughs> and I'm gonna make I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back and make a slight correction. Big Willie is correct on the season this year. Uh-huh. Normally, our season will not start until June. May is even dicey. I mean, I can I can recant many a May where we had our Rover Fest and it was maybe forty degrees, and oh, we're out there playing. Geez, and we we have the big hats on and not wearing our vin- you know everybody's bundled mm-hmm. up and. Oh. miserable and the only thing that makes up for it is that we do a cookout and feed everybody who comes to it so you know they get a free meal out of it but even sometimes when it's that miserable and cold you're just like give me the sandwich i'm gonna take it to go oh my <laughs> god see, see i don't i don't mind october baseball but when yeah. it's in when it when when it's the last weekend of the year and the game the last weekend or the last games before the October games were in mid September. I'm like, why are we waiting three weeks for Sand Creek, Wisconsin? And if you don't know where that is, I don't blame you. No one knows where it is. North it's like an hour. Yeah, it's like an hour and a half away. There's no place to eat in town. There's, there's like one place to get food in town, and they don't take cards. So you got to go to the. 
You got to go to the bank across the street, pay $3 to get cash out of the machine because there's no quick trip with, with free ATMs because there's one ATM in the whole town and it's freezing and it's just, I'm like, why are we here? I've got my Under Armour on top and bottom and I'm still cold. Because it's awesome because we're playing baseball I, in October. I, I know, but it's <laughs> the field dimensions are all weird. Like if Bubba breathes on a ball, it's going to go over the right field fence. And it's not even a fence. It's corn. Yeah, That's plowed what the corn. outfield fence is. Plowed corn, yeah. That's yeah. the... So the nominee. Uh, Will's working through some things here, folks. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 I love. I mean, I would love that, but for for an hour and a half away, I'm thinking like, what is <laughs> what is this, man? And I gotta, I gotta haul butt back because there's a Michigan Tech hockey game I want to watch, and I'm like, am I gonna make it? Why oh, would like, you want to watch a Michigan Tech hockey? I game? mean, that's yeah, that's, that's what pretty I'm into, obscure. <laughs> hey. Hey, but you know what? If you're not watching it, who is, right? So ded- props for your dedication there. That, you know, all these stories about like playing in cold, it just tells me right off the bat as a hitter not to hit the ball directly to anybody because those those people clearly don't care about their hands. Like mm-hmm. they're out there in the cold building vintage baseballs. I can't, ugh, I don't even know if I have that in me. I'm going to be honest with you. As a younger person, I would have been like, yeah, let me knock this down. As mm-hmm. in my advanced age, I'm like, that's a, that's a base hit. Good job. Good job. <laughs> you did that. So let's, let's chat about, you talked about travel and how like the rum river rovers don't really have a home field. So you've, you've traveled a lot. This question is, you know, this is the question we ask here. What are some of the favorite places you've traveled? And it doesn't have to be big. It can be like something as intimate as a town with one ATM and they don't take card and they only take cash. It can be whatever you want. <laughs> it's it's not Sand Creek for me. It's like all, <laughs> all respect to the local team there. It was fun. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, I'll, I hear in general, I'll take I'll take a game anywhere you know if there's a sub in need i'll go play you know it's just for fun Mm -hmm. um road trip for me or away location usually it would be it does it can be michigan it does is it michigan or minnesota or wherever you want as long as you you went there it's whatever you want i i would say greenfield village because i've played there twice and i went to that was how i got into vintage ball as a kid Mm -hmm. going to see games there um I like it because that's where people come and watch. It's fun when, like, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. the the BS sessions with the players on your team and the other team are fun. But when a lot of com- people come to watch you play, that's a lot of fun. And my last game there before I moved, my mo- or no, my first one after I joined the Wahoos, my mom comes up to me after the game and says, "William, I think there's someone we know on the." on the on the Lottie Daz and she's like, I think he's the guy you took a picture with when you were 10. <laughs> and I'm thinking back, oh, that does make sense because that has been a magnet picture on my parents' refrigerator since I was 10. And I was Whoa. born in, you know, and I I moved back down to the Detroit area in 2021. So yeah, I was like, oh yeah, that is him. So he's been on the Daz since I was 10. Was it Cougar Kozlowski? I don't know. I'll try to, I I don't know what his name was, but my mom's like, I think he's the guy. And I I didn't recognize him. And then she pointed him out and I'm like, I I just stared at him for a minute. And I thought that is him. So I got a picture with him like, wow, 13 years later. And of course he didn't, he didn't remember me because he probably has kids coming up like, Hey, let me take a picture with you, man. You know, Wait a second. He didn't remember you that. What a jerk. Those guys on the <laughs> Dawes, they don't care. I tell you that much. Am I right? Barrel roller. Yeah. He was nice though. He was nice about it. Like he let, you know, I sat there and my mom was there and we're, we, we told him the whole story of, of this thing. Like this isn't a, this isn't a maybe like, we know you're the guy and you know, you have been on my parents' refrigerator as a picture for, you know, <laughs> since that photo was taken in 2007. Wow. So, you know, he was like, oh, that's so cool. 
and I thought that was neat. Did you get another picture taken? Did I miss that? I did. And I was asking my parents before, once I figured out I'd be a part of this recording, I'm like, mom, can you look for this? You know, I'm, 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 I'm looking in the vault of my, of my hard drive back up for this picture. And I'm, I'm looking on my Google drive right now, but I wasn't able to find the picture of he and I in 2007 and the one from a couple of years ago. But I, I think I do have a picture of him just on the field. Uh, Mark, what's the craziest picture you have on your refrigerator? <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, probably. Oh, craziest. Uh, probably my four-year-old. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's, he's dominating the refrigerator right now. So the the world kind of revolves around all those pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, Rudy, how many art projects made of pasta are currently on your refrigerator? Uh, you know, you just don't get up on the fridge in this household. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna have to bring bring something. I need to see some death perception. I need to see like you got to really shade. So we're we're not on fridge material yet. <laughs> That was a great answer. Yeah, that was good. Uh, William, did you know that the uh, while you were a member of the Royal Oak Wahoos and you were attending Frankie Muth and you were meeting some Minnesota people, did you know that they pulled a fire alarm during a wedding reception at the Bavarian Inn? Are you aware of this story? One of the Wahoos pulled that? No, one of the fun guy. The fun guy. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, sorry. so how you define fun guy is getting an evacuation during a wedding reception. That's a that's that's a fun guy. Allegedly. Allegedly. I, 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 only, I only started playing vintage ball in 2021. So I I I have not heard of this and uh no I have not heard of as that. long as you just say allegedly you're okay. It, it that's has because been... the statue of limitations hasn't ended yet on that. Uh. Well, if it hasn't, I won't name the individual because I know him. <laughs> I do too. That's how I found out. <laughs> uh, that's why I know my source is correct. Right. Uh, Mark, can you tell us how you came across vintage baseball for the first time? Yeah. Um, it was actually a phone call from my best friend, Eric, who started the Rum River Rovers. And he called me out of the blue. I was living in Colorado at the time. And he called me out of the blue and he's like, when are you coming home next? It's summer. You and I have been playing baseball together for the last 35 years. When are you coming home? I have a game to show you. And I was like, oh, because we had played before I left Minnesota. We had both played on a town ball team um, it, where we grew up in the city. We grew up in was called Ham Lake and the little town that we grew up in is called Soderville. Um, but they had a town ball team. And we had both played on that for a little bit. And I was like, oh, so this is a town ball thing? And he's like, not exactly. <laughs> and I said, so what is it? And he's like, well, it's 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 baseball, but it's like softball and it's vintage and it's old and it's about history and it's about having fun. And I said, well, that sounds like playing in the backyard. I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in Minnesota in a couple of weeks, you know, is there a match? And he's like, I don't know, but if there is, we're going. <laughs> there ended up not being anything that week I went back to Minnesota, but um, the following year I came back and that's when I moved back to Minnesota. And he was like, hey, you you know, remember this vintage thing I told you about last year on the phone? I said, yeah. He goes, there's a, there's a tournament in um, Barron, Wisconsin this weekend. Do you want to go play? I said, I'm in. I didn't have to hear any details. I didn't have, I, you know, it was with my best friend, the whole wide world. Why wouldn't I want to go play baseball again? And um, so he took, we went to the Barron historical um, uh, area. Oh God, I can't remember the name of the, the museum, Barron historical museum. And uh, that's where I Saw vintage baseball for the first time. I played on the Osceola Onions. I was an onion for one day. Started my Latin or my name on the contract <clears throat> and uh, fell in love with it right there. I mean, it was just, to me, it was the classic uh, um, 
bringing back the childhood, you know, a um, bunch of guys going out, having fun. Nobody took it too seriously, but the competitiveness was still there. So the juices flowed a little bit. We played um, one pace from the bag. The position players had to p- play one pace from the bag. And then we had the Rover. And I think that's kind of where we stole the name from is because that's where we both kind of fell back in love with the game of baseball. And uh, um, so, yeah, I played, I was a left-handed second baseman. I know one of your guests referred to being a left-handed second baseman as only the natural position as a lefty. Um, (laughs) But, you know, that that was, that was where uh, my vintage passion began and I haven't looked back since. So it's, it's been a fun ride and I hope it keeps going. (laughs) That's fantastic. And uh, uh, Will has sent uh, the picture of uh, his, his Lottie da uh that that is on the the refrigerator i'm going to share it right now uh for everyone to see um here we go oh so, no, no. the host has disabled screen sharing of course never mind well folks well i i i how do i do it so i don't <laughs> i don't think that that's not the picture that was on my refrigerator but that's the gentleman that is him I'm pretty sure that's him. Yeah. So, uh, gosh, the, the picture that's on my refrigerator is him in between myself and a friend of mine uh, who came with me to watch vintage baseball at Greenfield Village because that was my birthday. Oh. That was my birthday present, you know, going to watch the vintage baseball at Greenfield Village. So it was my 10th birthday present. And then the uh, the other one that has him in it is just he and I. And that's just that's I was, just wholesome oh yeah i was I, I mean i was looking for it i'm looking in old cell phone backups i'm looking all over the place asking my parents they they, they couldn't find it but i was i did see that one so that must have been one that my mom or her friend took of him when my mom was like looking at, at the game thinking oh that guy looks familiar so because because i'm I, when i was looking at the album full of pictures i'm thinking you know all these pictures in here from this day at greenfield village in 2021 are either of me or of our, our you know the teams lined up along the third baseline where we talk to the the fans and we do the coin flip and this is the this is like the only one that's of one player on the Dodge. so i'm thinking this guy is probably it and looking at his face i'm, I'm pretty sure it rings a bell He's still going strong too. Mm-hmm. Wow! I uh, and his name escapes me. I've seen this uh, gentleman many, many, many times for many, many years. Well, if I could see it, I'd know who it was. But it's in the chat. Click uh, the I chat. Didn't... I'm, hey, I'm on clicking the chat. Here's the guy in the dog. Oh, let's see this. Nope, no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we uh gentlemen can you tell us uh coming from a minnesota point of view i'll get an answer from both of you is an event we might not even have heard of uh over here in michigan ohio but is there an event you guys haven't been to yet that you really look forward to the rovers maybe getting on their schedule in the future We'll start with you, Mark. Sorry, I gotta. I'm directing traffic here, but sure. I'm not doing it. Mark, we'll start with you. That's fine. Um, oh man, I know as a kind of as a collective team, we always try to meet and kind of say, what are some events that we want to go play or try to go play or have enough interest to go play um, and bring a team. I, I know Gettysburg is one of those that we as soon as we started playing this, both my buddy Eric and I were his, well, he's a history teacher and I'm a history buff. So we were both like, well, this is like, this is like the Mecca for us to go play at Gettysburg. I mean, that's where, that's where it would kind of all make sense for us and and come together. Um, obviously the, I, I, I would say Greenfield village. I've, I've heard nothing but awesome things about that 
Um, I don't know if they take invites or outside teams. I hear it's kind of a tough, tough fill. Um, that would be one place. Um, yeah, I, 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 and we always, you know, every, every March, everybody goes, we should go to Florida and, <laughs> and do spring training down in Florida and bring nine guys down there. And now the awkwards are down there, the Orlando team. And so we're always, and my brother lives down there. So now I have an excuse to go down there and, and hang out. So um, that would also be another place to want to go. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say those, those places for me anyway. Big I mean, Willie. Yeah. So, well, first of all, I, I, I would love to do Florida, but I think like Nessie, what you said, it's, it's always a logistical nightmare. I remember the Wahoos as soon after I left Michigan for Minnesota here, the Wahoos, a couple of them messaged me. They said, yeah, when are you coming back? And some, <laughs> some of them were even saying that to me before I left and they're mentioning, yeah, we're going to go down to Florida. It's going to be great. And then I messaged, actually it was yesterday. I messaged Woody on the Wahoos and I, and I asked him whatever happened to that. And he said, there wasn't enough interest. So it never happened. And you know, the uh, Wahoos were never as, you know, sweaty good as the, as the, as Canton who go down there. Anyway, I heard go down there every year. Some people do, and you know, I don't know how they pull it off. Cause well, they're, they're, never... they're, they're children. They don't have responsibilities. So I was going to say some of the guys, when we, when, when we play Canton or see them at tournaments, some of these guys, they got their wagons and they're pulling all their gear. And then there's like three kids in the wagon. I'm like, how are they doing this? How are they going down to Florida with this? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's Disney World vacation for them every year or something like that, because that could that that could work out. But there you go. In in all seriousness, outside of Greenfield Village with the Rovers, I I would really like to go out west somewhere, maybe mountains like Denver. I know Canton went to like a high elevation, someplace in Colorado. It was like nine thousand feet. <laughs> it's like the highest elevation baseball field in the world. It was called something like the Gold Bowl because it was like a mining town. Mm. And that would be fun. That sort of road trip would be fun sometime in the summer, sometime somewhere high elevation because I don't want to go I don't want to go to Phoenix in July. That's not happening. <laughs> uh, you know, I I may have a I may have a reversal of fortune after every game down there. <laughs> if if I don't if I either eat too little or eat too much and then run too hard. Mm. But the, the mean, gold bowl. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say you. You never know that reversal of fortune might have another team reaching out to you and be like, "We need <laughs> some of that." So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't say like, "Oh, I want to go back to somewhere in Michigan" because I've played everywhere in Michigan. <clears throat> um, Gettysburg was always something we talked about on the Wahoos, but several of them didn't want to go because they said it was the rule set was weird, like open stealing, like first movement, not first contact you can steal. And it, 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 it you know, I'm sure it'd be fun, but it, it would, oh, it would it, you mean, what you, do you mean, mean the real rule? Yeah. What, yeah. But, that, but I'm you thinking mean the real rule, the, the Wahoos <laughs> are not, a, are not a team of like elite athletes here. I don't think I'm insulting anybody by saying that we are, you know, our captain is 65 years old. And he, he has like the Brett Favre syndrome of like one more year, one more year, one more year. And it just ca <laughs> happens. And then a decade later, it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, out east would be fun. Or, sorry, no, out, out west, you know, in the mountains, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah. It'd be fun to play out there. Nice. Nice. If there's, um, so we've talked about that. What's one thing? I mean, is it Rover Fest? Is it something else? What are you looking forward to? forward to this season what is on your schedule that you're like I'm, I'm excited for this oh yeah that was the actual question sorry uh no 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 that the barrel rollers you answered barrel oh, rollers. okay this okay is my question yeah yeah uh i was gonna say mankato but i can't make that again this year um <laughs> i i have a I, i'm going back like i said i'm going back to in july for a game at a minor league stadium in in lansing but, but that was that's what the wahoos but for for a man for a rovers game that you mentioned, I would probably have to say um, Rover Fest, the first one, because I did not move to Minnesota until June of last year. 
So I never got to do Roverfest. And I'll say most of our games, we don't get to be fed in between. We usually <laughs> either have to just stomach it and bring our own stuff or run to Jimmy John's down the road for a for a for a snack but for rover fest with a meal cooked for us in between that sounds fun nice how would you mark that uh um i i would say every year we get we get some pretty same events uh mankato we go to every year they're a very fond club of ours we like playing mankato they have some really good uh, baseball players that uh, know how to play the game and they run well and hit well. And it's uh, North Mankato fun days, which is also a bonus because we get to walk in their parade with them, um, which is one of the highlights, I think, of this. And then after having a child is even more of a highlight for me, um, getting to walk this parade and having my son walking with me, you know, at four years old, he's sitting in the wagon. He's not walking. Let's be real, <laughs> but he gets to throw candy to the kids and he's having a blast and we're walking this parade. It's about a mile and mile and a half, I would say walk. And that's before we play in the heat of July in Minnesota, which Ooh. is humid. And well, you know, it's just like Michigan, probably maybe not as warm as Michigan, but, uh, We've, we've, we've had a day down there where it was cloud cover, 90% humidity and like 90 degrees. Oh my God. And you're just like, there's no sun. How is this possible? How is this even happening right now? And you're just, your shirts are soaked and you can't get dry. And it's just, it's the most fun you ever had. <laughs> and, and, and our uniforms are long sleeves. Yes. And of course, I mean, you, you can of course roll them up, but like when you're running around, you know, they're going to, they're going to fall down. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, the if, you wear, look like, heavy. if yeah. you wear like a compression arm sleeve, like our shortstop does, you can keep it from riding down, but then you've got that layer of under armor, which kind of doesn't really <laughs> help. You know, it's not, you know, you're, you're still hot. <laughs> and then you're, and then you're out of uniform and we get fined for it. So, you know, that's, that's the other the other side of the Ooh, coin. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we have some characters for umpires, which is really great. Um, it it brings attention to us when you have outspoken umpires in in areas where there's lots of people, and we play on a on an elementary field that's right across from all the chaos of the circus and the amusement park, if you will, that they put up. So. It's very, it's highly visible to everybody walking by after the parade and they sit there and go, what are you guys doing? Why don't you have gloves on? What is going on out here? What he, it was a bounce and he gets out. What, what the heck? Isn't that a base hit? And so it's, it's kind of a nice, um, you know, calling to the, the vintage game. And, you know, part of the reason why we do it is because we like the history behind it and we, like to see people's faces when they see it the first time and go, you guys are nuts for playing this game without a glove. <laughs> so yeah, Mankato, La Crescent's on our schedule. Another beautiful uh, Minnesota town in the south of Minnesota, south uh, eastern part of Minnesota. Um, their field is nestled up against uh, a hill, if you will. And as you drive down the hill, you can see the, it's an old softball field. And again, back to the softball fields, I know, but it's a very cool um, atmosphere to play in um, like that. So that one I look forward to as well. Um, and then I would say Menominee is also a good one in Wisconsin. The, the um, They put on a heck of a, they get teams from all over. I think Bay City is coming up to that one this year. Um, you know, and they, we've played St. Louis teams. We've played, uh, teams from Ohio. We've played teams from Milwaukee, um, the grays and the, um, cream cities among a few. Um, so yeah, it, it, some of the highlights of our schedule, I would say for this year. Nice. If I can add something onto my previous answer for where I'd like to play, 
I, I want to add Field of Dreams. And I feel like oh. that is a lot more realistic for people in the Twin Cities area because, yeah. you know, <clears throat> you know, Greenfield Village, Florida, and Wyoming slash Denver, those are all, you know, round trip plane tickets. Michigan, you could probably do that, uh, you know, but I mean, let's, you know, I don't want to drive that much, but Field of Dreams would be one that does not cost a round trip plane ticket to go to. Nice. Um, I would be willing to drive there. And I've, I've been there um, before and I'm not, ta I'm, I'm talking about the old field, not the, not the new MLB temporary. Uh, well, not temporary, yeah. but the, cause it's just temporary stands, but the, the sports the, center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the full size field that, I mean, that'd be fun to play on. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But uh, I feel like, you know, you'd have to get all permission and go through a, you know, logistical, mm -hmm. you know, uh, gauntlet to, to, to get that approved. But um, I know they do play vintage baseball on the old movie set. Cause I got a text from my dad one day saying, Hey, guess what? Canton's playing there. <laughs> I don't know how he knew because I guess, I guess he knows someone on the Canton team maybe, but um, so I, 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 he like sends me a link to a webcam they have on the barn near the field. And I sure enough, I see her, I see the black pants and the green shirts. And I'm thinking these Canton guys go everywhere. Cause that was how I learned about the field at 9,000 feet elevation in Colorado. Oh yeah. Cause my dad said, Oh yeah. Canton went there. <laughs> and I learned about, I learned about teams doing spring training quote unquote in Florida because Canton went there, you know? So yeah, they're everywhere. You can't get yeah. rid of them. I, I will say field of dreams, having done it and having been able to play on the old field on the movie set field is a heck of an experience it's it's everything if you've watched the movie or not it's even if you haven't watched the movie it's still kind of cool to see the corn as the fence and the lights when they come on and walking into the corn and disappearing and then walking out onto the field it's it's a it's a top five baseball experience i think if you're if you love the game you should try I love I love how even though it was a movie set in a movie that was you know a, oh a Hollywood movie you know they think they go all out but I think they purposefully built it to look rustic and look like a farmer built it because that was the storyline in the movie they probably I'm sure they had the budget to build something massive and all these bells and whistles but I I like how they chose to kind of make it look like something that just a, like a, a one you know a one person crew would would have built over a period of several weeks by himself or with a, a small group of others. And I was surprised when I went there in 2019, when I actually had an internship in Rochester, Minnesota, that was my first taste of the state, I guess. But on my drive back to Ann Arbor, I stopped by and I thought, and I, I, I said to myself, wow, it's like smaller. It's not a full size ball field. And then it made sense. Cause I'm thinking if they actually made it, you know, 400 feet to dead center, it's going to be massive. And how, 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 how are you going to shoot that? You know, the outfielders who you're supposed to be able to see the faces of would look like ants. So that's why the, that's why the dead center, it's what, like 200 something feet. Yeah. 300 feet maximum. I don't know what it is, but it's not, it's not 400 feet. All right. The last question I got is for William. Uh, is that a, is that exhibition you're doing in Lansing? Is that the Negro league celebration match you're playing in? Uh, I don't think so. I got contacted that, that, by at the Lansing, the Lansing Lugnuts Stadium. Yeah. So, f from what I understand, it's going to be we're supposed to show up there at four p.m. The game, the Lugnuts game, is at seven p.m. But we're going to play like a two-hour exhibition game before the actual minor league game takes place. And I'm I'm assuming they'll let they'll open the doors open and you know like they'll oh, sorry they'll open the gates early and so fans can come in and watch the vintage game beforehand and apparently they're going to have someone there explaining the rules like a an old school umpire dressed um, dressed appropriately uh, they did it last year as the first year and they did it they're doing it again this year so the first year must have been pretty good and I, I knew that the Lugnuts promoted it pretty well. Um, I don't think it was a, a Negro League thing. I think I think that happens at the actual Negro League stadium, the old one in Hamtramck, which is uh, a, 
uh, I guess, a borough of Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. Yes, they do, they do that there at Hamtramck. I just thought that this Lansing Lugnut uh, match was a Negro League celebration uh, match. But anyway, I could be wrong. I was going to tell Rudy, it's, it's what we do here in Michigan. We we celebrate the Negro Leagues by getting a bunch of white people together, play by the rules of when they weren't allowed to play. That's what we do here in Michigan. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, anyway, but on that note, you guys, uh, you guys have been fantastic. Uh, Big Willie, I didn't even make the connection of who you were until you came in the room and then we started talking and, uh, you were the, the kid I felt bad about for about an hour. <laughs> I'm, I'm, surprised <laughs> you I'm surprised you remember. Cause that was, that wasn't last year. That was like summer of 2022. Uh, uh, I think. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. Well, you're you're the only one that's gone down like that during the during the gentleman contest during yeah, the and, gingerly gentleman. And I I sort of made the connection to you also because I I knew some people were re- recording a podcast there at the adjacent field to uh where the where the where the games were that day where they did the mightiest striker and competition and the running around the bases competition as well. And I heard oh some people are recording a podcast. <laughs> and I had no idea who it was, but I saw people in a tent with some microphones that didn't look like, you know, the gamer microphone that I got with the Mickey Mouse ear head headphones. There you but, go. You know, it was actually looked like some professional equipment. Um, but then when Nessie said, oh, there's a podcast happening. You want to be on it? I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this could be the guys in Michigan. And then I, I listened to an episode and you guys interviewed a guy from the Lottie Daz and I see marbles mentioned in like a WrestleMania recap. I'm like, okay, these guys are probably Michigan. Michigan guys, so that that must have been them in Frankenmuth. Guilty. Oh uh, yeah, that was a we're big deal. <laughs> we're big deal. Uh, and Mark, ask around. Also, thank... <laughs> <laughs> ask both of those people. There's two people. One of them's in Spain. I think we're a big deal. France. <laughs> the people in France gave up on us. Mark, also thank you <laughs> for coming on the show. We. Uh, appreciate Absolutely. you. We always enjoy talking to people and making new connections. Absolutely. Thank you for the invite. And this was a blast and, uh, continued success, fellas. I, uh, you got a new subscriber out of me. I, I've, I've been going through the episodes, listening to all the, all the names and, and everything else. So it's been fun. Well, appreciate that. Uh, yeah. And anybody who's out there listening, you can find us on Podbean or just well, anywhere where you get your podcast. You can also go to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see the video of this particular uh, interview and stick around all season for more stuff to come. Uh, we want to say thanks to these two gentlemen and I'm going to stick around with Rudy for a little bit and, and uh, get back together a little bit as it were. So uh, good night, gentlemen, and thanks for joining the show. Thank you. No problem. Thanks a bunch, guys. Rudy, ah, back in the saddle you are. Uh, it's good to see you, my friend. We haven't really talked that much. I let you, I let you get the acting. I didn't get in the way. I didn't want to, you know, cry too much about how I was missing you. So, uh, good to see you. It's good to see you. I just want you to know that. Uh... Out of solidarity, I didn't listen to a single episode that I wasn't in during my time away. So, because I wanted to keep this special. So, I didn't listen to a single one. That's all right. Get in line. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say to all my friends in Michigan, as I make fun of how you cancel everything in May and October. <laughs> And then cel- and then celebrate the Negro Leagues by being a bunch of white people. I just want to say it's accurate. I, <laughs> it's, but I love you. And let me say for the record, I've had cancel games before. I've been a reason games have been canceled, I'm sure. I don't remember, but I'm sure I was. So I'm not holding any of this against anybody. But it does make me laugh. The best comedy has a hint of truth to it. So there you go. There's more than a hint, brother. (laughs) But that's 
all right. Because you know what really happens, and it happens to you, but what really happens is uh, once September gets here, everybody remembers, wait a minute. It's my time is over. It's kids back to school time. And I didn't really factor that in because you're like, oh, whatever, we'll get we'll get it taken care of. But you really got to be there and you feel it in the moment and you're like, ah, ah, I can't go this weekend. And that's the reality of it. So, look. Yep. I'm not complaining. You've got family. You've got lives. You've got things to do. And so stop scheduling so many games. Or you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Or you can have a club that can pick up that slack. I'm just saying. You know, if you just lightened your schedule up and just made everything an event and special, you'd never have a problem with attendance. Never one. That's accurate. Who keeps? You keep scheduling your 25 games! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, next on next week's show, it's going to be a hoot as we get all of the Roller Out the Barrel personalities together for an episode. It's Rudy Swamp Fox Free Us. It's Jeff Cougar Kozlowski. It's uh, Landon Yeti Smith. It's Mike Marbles Feeney. And it's yours truly, the Barrel Roller. And we are going to all ask each other one question. It's going to be amazing as we go round table on some answers. And uh, I love we it. don't know what's going to happen in that one, but it sounds like fun. Uh, also looking forward to some unusual episodes in the future. Looking for an all woman episode. And when I say all woman episode, I mean an episode where I don't have to talk. <laughs> so I can just produce and uh women talk about vintage baseball. So uh I am gonna start putting that together and some other things and uh yeah, vintage baseball is here. When's your first game, Rudy? Um well my calendar says it's Saturday in Flat Rock, Michigan. Oh crap. I'm gonna see you there. And Canton's gonna be there too. Ah, no. uh, but you you know the best part, though? Yeah. I'm just a spectator. I'm just a spectator. Oh, no. I ain't doing squat. You know why? Because they didn't even give me a damn hot dog last year. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not why. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i acting as I am an amateur yeah. uh, in, a, in Mike Feeney's haunt this weekend as I am a, a mayor. I am playing a mayor, and I'm not scary at all, but I am creepy. There you go. That's going to be the best. And since I'm already going to be spending the night there Friday, and uh, you wouldn't come play with me, uh, then I'm going to – I got nothing to go going on, so I'll probably come and watch some uh, softball players. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come watch some softball in a park. And everyone's <laughs> going to be like, why are those softball players playing in the grass? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Love it. <laughs> you know, it's just as great as when you see vintage baseball players playing in the dirt. There you go. Right. Happens just as much. Exactly. Do I sound bitter tonight? No, you're full of piss and vinegar, and I love it. Ah, uh, I'm getting to the age. You know, you get to the age. You're not there yet, Rudy, but you're gonna get there. Your kids are too young, so it's gonna happen to you later. So it's happening to me in my early 50s. It won't happen for you until your late 50s. But you really do. It's I know people talk about it, but it really happens. You don't care anymore. <laughs> you just, you, whatever. Hon honesty <laughs> is a lost art. It's okay. All right, my friend. I will see you next week. And thanks for everybody for listening. Uh, please. Spade and neuter your pets. Oh, let's hear what Rudy's got to say to end the show. Uh, for the barrel roller, I'm the Swamp Fox, reminding you to fair foul I don't want, no, or not no, to cut, fair foul. Cut, cut, 
cut. I don't like your energy. Uh, I need you to bring more energy. I want you to, I want you to say whatever you want to say, but I want you to say it in your character that you were in the play. And if it right. sounds sick, that's fine. That's Are you okay. ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Yeah, okay, get ready. <laughs> okay, here we go. Mm. For the barrel roller, I'm the swamp fox. <laughs> Telling you to keep it stationed to station, and I'll see you out in the field. Boom. <laughs> did, did you die in this play? Did your yeah, character buddy. die? Yeah, but the best acting is when no one can tell you're acting. So, there you go. Yeah, but was there a death scene? Uh, yes and no. I, it, it's hard to explain. You had to be there. <laughs> I wanted to be there. You were there I, in spirit. I wanted it. was in my thought. Every, you were but there. You, but there is a video of it, right? I can watch this, right? No. No. You're a liar. You are a liar. You're not you, you you're not allowed to film professional theater for distribution. Well, it wouldn't be for distribution. I don't, don't want to buy it. They don't give it out. <laughs> Somebody's got it though. Somebody filmed it. I'll 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 ask around and see see what we think. Wow. See what's, what's available. You see, this is the same game you played with me for years. That you were in that little Stephen King King thing, and it took me for years to be able to see that <laughs> damn thing. And it's only like five minutes long or whatever. Dang. And you put up the roadblock on that damn thing forever. Well, it was like, come on, can I? <laughs> can I watch something you were good in? <laughs> yes cut it end it right now <laughs> all right i love you love you more <laughs>